Hi guys, my name is Satish Kole, one of the surgical registrars from Bangor in North Wales. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own laparoscopic box trainer from a cardboard box. I would like to start with a brief introduction about simulation training. Simulation training can be defined as the creation of a true to life learning environment that reflects real life scenarios. It gives trainees an opportunity to put their knowledge and skills into practice through physical hands-on activity. Simulation training can be used to learn new skills but also to improve on existing skills. It can also be used for the assessment and certification of skills acquired. Several factors led to the development of simulation in laparoscopic surgery. Reduced working hours, cost of theatre time, Focus on medical errors and the ethics of learning skills on patients are the most important factors. Laparoscopic simulators are essentially of two kinds. They either use inanimate box trainers or use computer-based virtual reality software. The simulators provide an opportunity for the trainees to learn and practice basic skills in a relaxed and inexpensive environment outside the operating room. They help the trainees achieve a basic level of technical skills that can then be transferred from the skills lab to the operating room. An inanimate box trainer is essentially composed of three main parts. A body inside which various skills are practiced. A visualization system that captures images from inside the box and transfers to a monitor. And training equipment which includes laparoscopic instruments and other material. Laparoscopic box trainers that are available on the market have a body of various shapes and sizes. Some have a solid box that looks like a cube, whilst others have a body that looks exactly like an abdomen with a soft cover or anterior abdominal wall through which various ports can be inserted for practice. The visualization system can be composed of a laparoscope very similar to that used in theatres along with the stack whilst other trainers have a webcam that can then be connected to a monitor. The training equipment includes laparoscopic instruments and various other materials as is required for the skills being practiced. The body of the laparoscopic box trainer that is being proposed in this video is essentially made of cardboard. A simple cardboard box is divided into two pyramids, one of which acts as the box trainer or shaped into a box trainer. A smartphone or a tablet acts as a visualization system and may be connected to a bigger screen through a HDMI cable or through a Wi-Fi. There is no change in the training equipment required and essentially includes all the laparoscopic instruments and other materials that are required for the various skills. Smartphones have developed leaps and bounds in the last decade or so. The current generation of smartphones and tablets have a high definition camera capable of recording good quality images and videos. Trainees can record videos of their practice and then review those videos to reflect on their training. So essentially, smartphones can replace all visualization systems currently used in commercial box trainers. So let's crack on guys. I've got a thick cardboard box here measuring 59 by 43 by 39 centimeters and we are going to cut this box along the red lines into two pyramids. Just a word of caution guys, we are going to use a very sharp knife here to cut the cardboard box and at places it is quite difficult to cut it. So please be careful and don't hurt yourself and if you have any children in the household make sure they're well away from you We'll end up with a pyramid like this with two surfaces from the roof and two sides. 
one of the surfaces forming the roof we are going to use as a work surface and we'll cut out a window to slot in the camera of a smartphone or an iPad or a tablet. On the other surface of the roof, we'll cut out windows for light entry. We'll also cut out windows on the sides for light entry, but also to use our hands to maneuver objects inside the box. I'm securing all the loose ends of the box and also the base of the pyramid with the tape so that the box is uh, stronger and stable. If you are wondering as to why I have cut a round window followed by a rectangular window, please be patient. It will be obvious by the end of the video. We have ended up with a reasonably big box trainer because I've chosen a big box for a demonstration today. As you can see, the base of the pyramid is hollow. This is a slightly smaller box trainer that I've been using for the past few months. I have fixed a small horizontal piece of cardboard such that a smartphone or a tablet can rest against it. Just to show you the setup of the box trainer at night guys, the round window was cut out such that it would fit the head of a table lamp and I can practice at night as well. On the other surface we are going to place a smartphone or an iPad such that the interior of the box can be visualized through the window. The picture here shows three box trainers. The one to the left is one of the first, first box trainers I have used. The other two pyramidal box trainers have been shown in the video earlier. For the pyramidal box trainer, the window for the camera of a smartphone or a tablet is made right in the center of the surface measuring about 5 by 5 centimeters. Two portholes are made about 18 to 20 centimeters apart on a horizontal line below the window with the window exactly midway between the two portholes. We will discuss about the distance between the two portholes in more detail in a minute. With regards to the size of the box, I am not aware of an optimum size. The size of the boxes that I have used to create the pyramidal box trainers shown earlier in the video are 59 by 43 by 39 centimeters for the big box and 41 by 35 by 35 centimeters for the small box. In a box trainer, the port holes act as a fulcrum for the instruments. The position of the ports, the distance between the port holes and the distance between the port holes and the target play a crucial role in determining the manipulation angle and the efficiency of performing a given task. These factors are discussed under the term ergonomics of port placement. So I did a PubMed search with the terms ergonomics and port placement. One of the articles from the search that I liked was published from Australia by Mulman et al. These guys calculated the manipulation angle used at various stages of both right hemocolectum and high anti-resection. Manipulation angle is the angle between the tips of the left and right hand instruments when they converge at the target. A manipulation angle of 60 degrees is considered ideal. This study concluded that there are no two port placements that would allow for an ideal manipulation angle at every stage of mobilization for either the left or right sided resection. I wanted to know a bit more about this manipulation angle of 60 degrees and where it came from, so looked at the references. The first 
in the reference section is an article published in British Journal of Surgery in 1997 by Hannah, Shumi and Kusheri investigating the influence of direction of view, target to endoscope distance and manipulation angle on the efficiency of endoscopic knot tying performed by 10 different surgeons. Three rigid endoscopes, knot degree, 30 degree and 45 degrees were introduced at distances ranging from 5 to 15 centimeters from the task. Needle holders were inserted to make 30 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree manipulation angles. The study concluded that the optimal manipulation angle is 60 degrees and the optimal endoscope to task distance is 7.5 to 15 centimeters. I want to use these two numbers, a manipulation angle of 60 degrees and a camera to target distance of 7.5 to 15 centimeters in my box trainer to maximize my training. Let me explain with the help of a diagram. Assume the two red lines represent two laparoscopic instruments inserted into the box through the left and right ports converging at the target of the polar mints. If the lengths of the two instruments inserted into the box are equal to each other and are also equal to the distance between the two portholes, an equilateral triangle is formed making all the three angles including the manipulation angle equal to 60 degrees. If the distance between the two portholes is 16 centimeters with the camera located exactly midway between the two portholes and the lengths of both laparoscopic instruments inserted into the box are also 16 centimeters, an equilateral triangle is formed again with a manipulation angle of 60 degrees. The camera to target distance is calculated as 13.8 centimeters by the Pythagoras principle for a right angle triangle. An equilateral triangle of 18 centimeters would still give you a manipulation angle of 60 degrees with a camera to target distance of 15.6 centimeters. An equilateral triangle of 20 centimeters would still give you a manipulation angle of 60 degrees but would increase the camera to target distance to 17.3 centimeters. I would suggest you remember and use 20 centimeters in your box trainer simply because it is easy to remember that 20 plus 20 plus 20 equals 60. What I mean to say is that 20 centimeter lengths of the left and right hand instruments inserted into the box trainer and 20 centimeter distance between the portholes would form an ideal manipulation angle of 60 degrees. I have used my hands through the side window to adjust the training equipment inside the box to my liking. All the video clips used in my other video titled lab pass and introduction have been recorded using this cardboard box trainer and an iPad Pro. The main purpose of this video is to show you how to make a box trainer that is cheap, eco-friendly, personalized, that doesn't need a camera, assistant and most importantly fun to make. And I hope that this box trainer will bring simulation training into your study room. Thank you guys for your time. Please do share your experiences of making your own box trainer in the comment section of this video on my channel BMW Surgery. Thank you guys.